No problem. Thank you. Hello, people of Reaper. How you doing? Good day, everybody. Quick mic test, quick, uh, quick everything test. Can you hear the music? Can you hear my voice? Can you see my nose? Is everything fine? Is everything fine here? Let me greet you guys. Welcome in, welcome in to uh, Brinewood Studios, number one. It's a, it's a great honor for me to be able to be the first little person in this, in this event thing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do my best. To keep you guys entertained for the next couple of hours. These are uh, weird times we live in. And hopefully, you know, we can just take a load off and paint some puppets together. From Reaper. I want to finish the... Dark Rasp. I 
Ch dark, dark chain dark rasp this guy which we started as many of you might remember we started this guy joining ReaperCon. i i had a quick uh, one hour show there where i showed you guys how i do my comic book style people seemed to be interested in seeing me finishing this mini so why not i said right let's let's just get it done so let me greet you quickly hello marikella hello reaper john how you doing you beautiful person greetings greetings Hello Ishan, good day. Hello Jedi, hello Chewy. So many nice people. So many people I'm not familiar with, it's nice. I love streaming here from Reaper, because like I get to meet people that I don't know. Hello Image, thank you for the seven months, dude. How you doing? I don't have claps. I don't have access to clap here. Feels weird to get people subscribing and not having to clap access. It's like something is missing, dude. I can clap access if you guys want when you sub. Hello Arkan, how you doing? Hello Ento, what's up baby? Hello Kooves, good day. It's not a rerun, I'm reading chat. So no, it's not Moneta. How you doing? Hello, Gray. Greetings. Nice to see you here too. Hello, Mighty. Good day. Good day. Uh, hello, Kuv. Hello, Jedi. Uh, hello, Ads. How you doing, man? <laughs> hello, Killer. Hello, Quindl Quindy. I really been looking forward to this show and seeing the rest of the comic style paint job on Dark Rasp. So it was Dark Rasp. Nice. I didn't. Hello, Primal. Good day, sir. How you doing? What did I have for dinner? I had chicken with curry was good i enjoyed it inaugural official md stream indeed indeed it's an honor it's an honor hello orca hello largo hello nosfe how you guys doing how you guys doing so i want to finish this guy uh so let's uh let's do the cape shall we as you guys remember last time during ripercon i used uh black paint pretty much on a white model so the model was primed white as you see as you see the weapon here, or as you see the, the cape here. I used black to sketch in the shadows. By sketching, I mean, I simply... Uh, I mean, you probably know what sketching means, it's a word, but I, I, I blocked in the paint, the black paint, to suggest the shadows of the model. The same thing a wash might do, or the same thing a glaze might do. I did it with a base coat paint. So I, I base coated the shadow, just blobbed them on the model, in a very stark kind of way. And then, after blocking in the shadows, I cleaned up the model by painting what would be the base coat of it. Like, in the case of the purple, I used purple, like a darker purple you can see here. I used that color to paint all over the model, and then I highlighted it. The interesting thing about this style is that it's quick and it's nice, in a sense that uh, even if you do want to blend, you only have to blend the highlights, because it's nice to have this stark contrast between shadow and base coat, so you have like these black lines very starkly creating contrast and then you have the allies being blended it's a um, it's the same style the guys at darkest dungeon use in the video game so it, it's something really cool anyway i hear more of a voice in your left headphone than your other one do you guys hear me am i am i whispering in one of your ears or both of them hello everybody a sound on the left ear only what the Heck? Hello Whiskey, how you doing? Hello Matthew, welcome in. Hello Valandar, good day, good day. How do we fix that? Hmm. Marika, do you want me to give you team viewer so you can check? You can do some okay. Sorry guys. First stream on this uh, different platform. I'm not using my usual streaming setup. I'm using a different one so I can stream from Reapers. So uh, it, th there was bound to be something wrong. That just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really am. Hopefully my girlfriend gets to fix it while I'm while I'm talking to you guys. <sighs> Painting maniac numero uno. First time I'm using Twitch. Welcome to Twitch. How you doing, man? What's up? Good day. Good day. Welcome in! Reaper is a great stream, they have lots of content. You will not only see my face here, you will see tens of people around here. I'm just I'm just a humble uh, host. So if you don't like me, stick around anyway, because in a couple of hours somebody else will take my place. So eventually you're bound to like somebody. <laughs> How you doing, man? Welcome to Twitch. 
Hello, no quarrel. Good day, sir. Yes, we're painting comic book style. So we did the we did the, the cape. So I want to do sorry we did the 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 body. I want to do the cape now. What color do you guys think would look good on this cape? I don't know. Since we're going for a necromancer kind of guy, you know, because of the scythe and because of the the, the thing, a dark color I think would fit nicely. Uh, maybe a green, you know, purple and green. They look good together. So why not? What do you think? Should we go for green? If you don't like Kluka, you have a phobia for noses. <laughs> noses are scary, man. They can, they can, they can breathe you in and then you die, man. Noses are super scary. So let me just access my Reaper collection. I have all of my Reaper paints in a drawer here, so I'm just gonna pick a green and, and use it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, forest green. I'm gonna be using forest green. Let's let's try it out. I'm gonna give it a good shake with uh, with my vortex mixer. I like vortex mixer. I hope Reaper should do one like a, a Reaper looking vortex mixer. Having like a little Reaper, you can put the paints in its arms. Okay. Cult of purple and teal. Hmm. Well, this forest green is a blue green, so you know, I'm gonna give you the teal you want. I think you're gonna get the teal you wanted. See, like it's a, it's a very tealish color actually, so that's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna block it in to onto our white. It's gonna take me a couple of coats to get full coverage, but that's not a big deal. And if you guys have any questions about miniature painting. Feel free to ask. I have a bunch of paint jobs that I have done here on my desk around me. So if you want to see some of my work to get an idea of what I do, usually, you can feel free to, to ask me. I would love to show you stuff. Hey, Marikella, thank you for the sub. How are you doing? A skull with the mouth open and you feed the bottle into the mouth. That would be actually nice. That would be actually nice. Okay, so we're getting our teal sorted out. Hello, Primal. <laughs> Man, it feels so weird to not hear the Gurzak song and not having to, to clap my axes. It's just like, so weird, dude, it's so weird. I, I don't know how to explain it, like, uh, feels weird, man. Show off a few of your minutes as crow as coats dry. Um, yeah, I can do that. Coats coats dry as I place them, so I don't really have to wait. But uh, yeah, I can do that. Do you have a normal light or light with paper in front of the bulb so it doesn't shine? I have um, I have suppressed lights. Yes, I have paper in front of the light so it doesn't. Uh, so it doesn't have such a strong uh, shine. Mentally claps axes. <laughs> Hello, Trouble. How you doing, man? Good day. What's up? Prepare for trouble and make it double. I hope you enjoy the music. I'm going for a for a lo-fi, chill kind of music. Very relaxing. Okay, so the idea is to get these color blocked in. And as you can see, since Reaper paints have this nice creamy consistency and they have, uh, and they have uh, a very veiled coverage kind of thing, even though I am painting very harshly, I'm not really going over the black because the paint is not in, is not really covering it. So the black I have done is not getting ruined by this green, even though I'm kind of painting over it. Unless I did multiple coats, you wouldn't be able to notice. So I'm only painting over the white, really, which is like I think this style here works really nicely for uh, for Reaper paints because of that. They're uh, they're they're uh, 
their, their transparent consistency allows you to to get some nice results quickly right because like you don't have to worry about being neat as long as you place the blacks correctly you're fine there's no music wait there is no music okay i can uh, i can do this then okay you should be hitting it a lot louder now i think Is it good now? Also, what about the voice? Am I still in your left headphones and that's it? Oh my god. <laughs> He's so weird. Wait, so everything comes out of the right headphones, including the music? Oh, that's weird. That is very weird. Okay. You fixed it. Well done, Marika. You beautiful woman. You beautiful woman. Thank you, Marika. Can we get some hypes in chat for Marikella and our tech support? Thank you. You still are going crazy, man. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, is there anything else I would like to be this color? Yes. The the handle of the weapon would work nicely, I think. So let us do that. Although this handle would be bones. Nah. No, let's do the handle in bones. Let's let's forget about this deal here. I want to do it like a bone. Looks like a spine. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Hello Spanish, good day sir, how you doing? How you doing? Okay, so we got this color uh, blocked in. Let me get a bit of a brighter color uh, and then uh, block that one in as well. Get myself some uh, some light. Let there be light, said Al Pacino. Uh, I really like the HD range, so you'll see me use it a lot. Uh, even though it has been discontinued, that doesn't really matter. I, let me call that out of the way. But yeah, even though it has been discontinued, like these these paints I'm using, they still exist. They just are under the Reaper Bone set. Hello, where is he? Good day, sir. Okay. That brush has a big handle. Did you steal it from Bob Ross? It has a big handle. It's it's um it's a Da Vinci brush, which I'm not liking particularly, by the way. I, I'm not having a good time with these brushes. Some white. It once was a happy little tray. Yeah, that's true. Alright, there we go. So we can add some of these yellow to our teal to make it greener. I, I like mixing quite a lot. I tend to avoid uh, using uh, too many colors in my painting, but there's nothing wrong with that per se. It's just like a matter of preference, really. I just enjoy mixing because I'm lazy. I don't I don't want to spend too much time shaking paints. All right. So it makes a lot. Yes, indeed. So I'm just blocking in the color to get some some R lights. The reason why I'm alighting the bottom is because of how it's uh, the shape of it. It's kind of folding and becoming uh, perpendicular to the light source, which would be the sun or whatever on top of him. So I am alighting also the bottom a little bit more, not keeping it dark. Okay. 
and I love Reaper paints for this. Like the the way they blend is really impressive. Like it's very easy to get a blend with these paints. Very very easy. We can go brighter than this. Add more yellow and more white at the same time. You see me use web blending quite a lot in my painting over the time I'll spend with you. That's because I enjoy it so much. Web blending is the future. I absolutely love it. Yes, Monet, I can. But it's it's a matter of experience. Anybody can, as as long as you as long as you you know practice it enough. It's color picking, right? It's like what Photoshop would do, or any uh, software would do. Would tell you what colors you're picking, and your eyes can pretty much do the same thing with enough training. It's useful because, uh, especially at very high level of painting, uh, when you're looking to get the model to look like. Has it ever happened to you that you paint a model and for some reason the colors don't seem to look like they're working together, even though technically they should? And the reason is usually most of the time is that the colors are a bit separated from each other. A good way to avoid that issue would be to mix a bit of all colors together in the mix. For example, right now, if I really wanted to be like super triarding, I would have a bit of purple into this cape. Color. Like in the green, I would add a touch of the purple I have from the cloth to, to get that consistency, right? I'm not doing it because I want to show you guys the effect of the comic book style more than more than anything else at the moment. But yeah, that will work. Okay. Let's just get this finished up. Again, feel free to ask me any question you might have. Literally any question. I would be more than happy to answer. Don't feel like you're bothering me or anything like that. I know people enjoy watching streams and just, you know, lurking and that's fine. But if you do want to ask me questions, go for it. Brush size 2? Yes, it's a 2. Bit delayed engines, but how is everyone? Hello, Justin. I mean, Ella, how you doing? What's up? Doing great. I just wanted to uh, finish my, my lunch, and you'll appreciate this, but I had barbecue. <sighs> I want to try, but before I die, I want to try Texan barbecue and Texas hamburgers. I really, really want to try those. Every time we talk about, I mean, I have, I have a bit of a fetish for hamburgers. I love them. And every time we talk about them in my stream, Somebody always shows up and goes, oh, you should try Texan. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. Eventually, man. Maybe next year. If this COVID gets uh, gets solved one way or the other, I'll be able to. Burger. Carolina Barbecue, Carolina Barbecue Chicago Barbecue. Another voice in your head. Yes. It's, it's him. It is him. He's joined us. How are you doing? Doing great, doing great. Um, yeah, this this place we actually ate at today uh, is brand new. We'd never eaten there before. Um, obviously, I had to have it delivered since you know we're not feeling super well. But uh, it was it was it was probably better than the regular place we go to. Um, really? It was the brisket's probably some of the probably top three brisket I've ever had in my life. It was Holy pretty cow. good. Holy cow! There's so much different kinds of things I would like to try out. Good. So many things. Okay, so I'm, I'm okay with this cape. Um, we just need to make it uh, a little bit darker. So I'm just going to be... Um, I'm not darker, really. Just green out, I think. Let me get a green out. 
Okay. No, that's not. That's too. Did you get any new brushes? Are the element ones good? Um, element brushes are alright. Uh, especially for beginners, they're really good. For the kind of work I do... Uh, the, my problem is that I paint so many hours that my brushes, regardless of quality, don't really, uh, you know, match the, the cost. The value doesn't match the cost, in a sense that you know, when you paint, I don't know, one hour a day and a brush lasts you a month, that's pretty good, you know, like $8 for a brush, that's pretty good. But for me, that means that it lasts me a week, less than a week. And then it's not very good because I don't want to spend 40 bucks a month in brushes, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm still looking for a brush that is a, that is good, that, that lasts me more than a few days. I haven't found one yet. Let us, let us hope that Justin gets better. He will. He's a beautiful man. Thanks, Luca. I already feel better now. <laughs> nice. Nice. I, I am particularly, uh, you probably can't tell too much, too much, but I am particularly excited that we now have this show um, kicked off because, as Luca said in the beginning, he this is the, the um, maiden voyage of the Brindwin Studios Presents series where this is going to be all an... an a weekly show that we do um but you can look for showcasing other artists on this uh, series in the future so you know this this means a very good thing for the channel it means you're gonna see a lot more diverse and you might even see body painters in this this particular series you're gonna see all kinds of stuff won't be me though i'm not gonna body paint my nose what <laughs> once one stream wouldn't be enough for me to paint my whole nose <clears throat> Tune in next week when Luca does Harley Quinn. <laughs> On I mean, I could pull off a Joker, I think. I mean, the Joker from the comic doesn't look too different from me. He also has kind of a big nose. Not as big as mine, but... Maybe a Joker, but... Harley Quinn? I'm not sure. Okay, so I am happy with this cape. I'm gonna have to mat varnish it. Um... Do you guys want to know about varnishing? Because maybe it's something that can be interesting to you. But yes, I do use varnishes in my painting sometimes. And uh, this will be one of those cases. Because uh, uh, there are moments, times, where the paints you're using one way or the other might dry in a finish that you don't like. For example, this clo cloak is drying super glossy. So I don't like it. I don't want the cloak, the cloak to look like it's wet, right? I want it to look like a cloak. So, a characteristic of uh, of uh, cloth is that it's very matte. Doesn't really reflect light in a in this way. So, one thing you can do is just use a varnish to fix it. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, I think. I will be I will be adding a bit of a varnish to this to make it uh matter. After I'm done painting it, I will just quickly give it a varnish. <laughs> Hello, butter. <laughs> I went to Lino Derek's dungeon board game Kickstarter. I'm so looking forward to painting all those minis like this. I am working from uh, another stream, which is not mine. And I definitely don't want to have uh, my opinions of that Kickstarter be connected in any way to Reaper, because that would be unfair towards them and also very unprofessional. So I'm, going, I'm not going to say anything about it. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good luck, man. Have fun. Yes, the this style comes from Darkest Dungeon. It's uh, it, it's a that's why I lifted it to, in a way. Like uh, I I have looked, I I love the video game. I am a huge huge fan of the video game. Huge fan of the video game. One of the biggest fans. And uh, you know I like I love how the characters look. So I was once gifted by Entheogenic, one of the viewers of my stream, and now here in the chat. Uh, she gifted me a bunch of minis from Etsy that were sculpted in a Darkest Dungeon, like the characters from the game. So I was like, well, might as well try out to do to paint them like they look in the game. So I had to to think a bit on uh, 
what made the characters look the way they did in the game and applying it to the model. And then I noticed that that style can work on many things, not just uh, not just Darkest Dungeon. Like, you can do anything with that style. Because it's the Mike Mignola style, right? Uh, the guy from Hellboy. It, it's sort of like a slightly different uh, take on that style. So it's that comic booky style, very high contrast. Let me use a varnish, though. What I like using is, in this case, I'm going to be using a matte varnish. And... Over the course of the stream, you will see this, this cape change color. Thank you, Wingo. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really, though, like, I uh, I know we kind of talk about stuff like this, but I really appreciate when uh, I don't have to coach answers for the people I bring onto the channel. That was that was the perfect answer without any coaching. Thank you <laughs> very much, Luke. You're fine. No, I don't, I'm not, like... When I say things on your stream, I'm saying them on behalf of Reaper, even though I am not. But to somebody watching that doesn't know me or doesn't know the, the channel, that would sound like I'm saying things on behalf of you. So, like, I need to be a bit more careful with what I say, because in my stream, I would have started a two hours and a half rant. But <laughs> on this one, I can't. And it's fine. I just want to paint puppets anyway. So, I'm applying this, uh, this matte varnish here. And when it dries, it's going to make the cape look very, 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 very dry. Which is a good thing, because we don't want the glossiness that we add. So, like, you can correct things on the fly, thanks to varnishes. Now, depends on who you ask, because, like, some painters, especially uh, old style painters, people that started painting 10, 15 years ago, will tell you that varnishes are evil and you should never use them in your painting, unless you are protecting a mini for tabletop clay. Because they ruin the paints and they change the colors. But uh, me, as a new painter, because I've been painting for only two years, right? Like, me, I don't feel that's that's a thing. Like, I honestly believe that those people have, like, some sort of PTSD coming from the old ages when varnishes were terrible. And uh, because they didn't have the proper mixtures, right? So they still are kind of scarred from ruining a paint job using a varnish. But, like, my experience with varnishes has always been good. Uh, they just simply modified the finish of paints. They never really changed how the colors behaved or ruined the paint job. So I don't know. I, I like if I'm painting a cape and I feel like uh, the cape is too glossy, I am gonna matte varnish it 200% of the time. I don't. I don't care. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be repainting it with matte paints. There's no point for that. Might as well just varnish it. It's a way to save time and uh, and get a good result. I think. Also, there was a question. I think we missed it from Moneta. Um, and your recommendation about brush size, something like mini, 25 mil. Brush size is a very personal thing, and it also has to do a lot with uh, your journey as a painter, I believe. Because, like, when I started out, uh, I was using, like, double, triple, zero brushes all the time to do anything. Because I couldn't get the paint to be in the places where I wanted to be, and I believed that, at the time, as many new painters believe, I was sure that the problem lied in the fact that the brush was too big. So I was like, well, I'm painting a mini, I have to use a mini brush, hey! But I was wrong, and it took me a while to figure it out, but uh, as you gain experience with painting and you gain brush control, which is literally muscle memory in how you move the brush around, you get to the point of understanding that the tip of every brush is the same, in a sense that... Uh, so this, is a, this brush is a number two, right? And if I use it like this, I get a big, thick, grimy line, right? And you might blame the brush. But the truth is that if you are careful enough and you manage the tip well enough, you can get some very, very fine lines even with a number two because the tip of the brush is always the same size. The difference in size between the tip, the very, very tip of the brush, between a number three brush and a number zero, zero is almost none. The tip is always very fine, it's the belly that changes, which means that a number two brush will hold more paint in it. When you get to this conclusion, which is all about using the tip properly and allowing the belly to simply store paint, then you get to the conclusion that maybe having a big brush is a good thing because it allows you to never go back to the palette and load every freaking second, right? So like, I could use a triple zero brush and have to reload the brush every time I do a brush stroke because I'm running out of paint, or I could use a number two and just go for it and have a lot of paint in it and that's what i the decision i made 
Like, I'm always trying to save time from doing things that I could avoid doing when I paint. All the time. Or not all the brushes are standardized, exactly. Yeah, like, Adavi like, um, uh, what's his face? Um... A Da Vinci brush is very different to a Raphael. Raphael brushes are massive compared to Da Vinci. Like, every every brand has its own way of calling the size. It's not really... There isn't a, a defined rule for it. It's all, about, it's all about how the company decides to treat it. So, like, very commonly happens that the number one from one company is uh, smaller or bigger than a two from other companies. So, like... Yeah, it's beautiful, lads. I love it, too. Yeah, the bigger you can go, the better it is, because you save time. You, just, you simply save time. Right now, what I'm doing is going back to the model and uh, adding a bit more shadows in areas where I skipped painting them because we were running out of time the other time. The other day, uh, when we did the, the Reapercon thing, I was really racing to get something done so people could see it. So I focused a lot on the cape, but I ignored pretty much everything else. So today, when we, since we have a bit, a little bit more time, I can, uh, I can focus a bit more on cleaning things up. The varnish is still drying, so that's that's why you feel it like it's still wet. When it will be dry, you should be able to see a very matte surface on the cape, which is going to make it a lot better because the finish will match the material, which is another interesting thing that I can talk about if you want. Like, how would the finish interacts with a material? And again. This is kind of a, like anything that has to do with finishes in painting is a personal subject and a personal discussion. We can I can tell you the two sides of the of the coin because there are painters who don't believe finish influences the quality of a painter, and there are painters who believe that it does. So if you guys are curious about it, I can explain to you what is exactly a finish and uh, how it influences a painter. Let me catch up with the chat. No, it lasted. It's still lasting, Whiskey. What are you talking about? Yeah, when you're using, like... like you... The thing is, you want to use a very small brush when you are doing something that requires an almost null amount of paint. It is not about the tip at precision, but it's about, like, how much paint do I want on my brush? If, if you're painting... Um, the eyes of a very small mini, then maybe you'd want to use a small brush just because to avoid like <clears throat> plopping a lot of paint in the eye area because if you have a big brush with a lot of paint loaded in it. So if you want to be a little bit neater and have a bit more control over how much paint your brush unloads, then yeah, go for it. Go for a small brush. But um, I, I use like I use a number two brush for everything. Like I paint everything, like even eyes with a number two. If brush belly size is a key factor in paint, not drying out of the brush before you can apply it, why do manufacturers bother selling double zeros and zero 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 zeros? Because people buy them. Simple as that. Also, yes, a very small brush in canvas painting is good. Like, let's say you are painting branches on a tree or something like that. Having a small brush allows you to get, like, that nice... If you're painting grass or stuff like that, because, like... Uh, especially in oil painting, control of the brush is less required than in acrylic, like than in mini painting. In mini painting, we value and we we like when the painter shows a lot of control of the brush. Like, for example, again, as I showed earlier, the 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 big thick line versus the thin line that that's control, right? The brush can do same both things, but the way you use it achieves different results. In oil painting, that doesn't happen as much, so. Painters tend to use different sizes to achieve different results. So they will use a small brush if you need a small line, or a big brush if you need a big line. We mini painters don't need that because we're always working small. So it's all about the control of the brush. We don't have like a massive canvas to work off. Yeah, we're probably less, Valandar. Probably less than that. Mini painters are a very, very small cut of the market. Very, very small. So it's difficult for to find companies. I don't even know where, like, I don't even know where you'd go to design a brush specifically for mini painting 
to an ex what I mean is that like an acrylic brush that has a perfect tip and it can allow like incredible control because the, the brushes we use in mini painting are watercolor brushes uh they use like real sable hairs but real sable hairs don't really like acrylics too much because they get eaten by them like acrylics are very aggressive towards real sable problem is we don't have any other option because synthetics aren't as nice so you are forced to having a real sable brush and but it dies so quickly so like until somebody comes up with a solution like a special kind of synthetic or some different kind of food whatever uh we're gonna start we're gonna we're gonna stuck with these uh, watercolor brushes and since the market is limited in confront of you know the overall art industry uh nobody really made any research on it i think Brush with shape exactly as mini. <laughs> that would be cool. Brushes that don't use standard naming convention, like Cidal or Ami Painter. Who knows what a regiment brush is or a shade brush is anyway? It's a way for them to simplify things because uh uh they the both companies you mentioned, they make stuff for beginners, for people who have no idea what painting is, right? So I remember when I started out, I was like I remember getting army painter brushes when I started out. And I was like, well, regiment is to paint regiments, which means I can paint a lot of models with this brush. While the shade one, I assume I'm going to use for washing, you know? Like, uh, giving a name to, to brush sizes helps people visualize what's, what's the purpose of the brush. If you give a number to a brush, like, yes, like, it, it decides the size, but a beginner painter still has no idea what to do with it. Like, a beginner painter will still wonder if they should use a 1 or a 10 or a 15 or a 2. Like, they don't know. But if you tell them that this brush is for base coating and this brush is for shading and this one is for a lighting, then they at least know. They eventually level up from that and move on to better brushes. But uh, that's the same. I mean, it's a good beginner tool. Hello, Delcy, how you doing? I use a mix of sable and synthetics, trying to save my good brushes for more detailed work. That is a good plan, yes. Like, if I wasn't a lazy, lazy, lazy person, I would be having a series of synthetics on my desk that I use for base coating and then whip out my fancy brushes only for uh, for highlighting. Unfortunately, I am the avatar of laziness, so it'll be harder for me to achieve. Oh yeah, I should. Like, you're right. That That's the right thing to do, I believe. It is absolutely the right thing to do because when you're base coating, you don't really care for the brush having, you know, perfect tip or anything like that. You just want, you just want the paint to flow off. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the cape has dried. It's still a little bit satin, which means I probably should do another coat. Uh, I'm just gonna, first gonna reinforce the shadows here. Again, blocking them in a very strong way to keep up with the style I don't want the shadow to blend I want the shadow to be stark in the blackness but you can see the massive difference that it has made changing the finish of the cape right first it looked like wet now it looks like a cape that's why I just dip my minis in paint like easter eggs it really spends <laughs> If you were really lazy, you'd be using an airbrush. No, 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 that's not true. No, no, no. I don't use an airbrush very often because I am lazy. Because for me, like, the the setup I have on my desk and everything makes it very hard for me to get an airbrush out, use it, and then clean it quickly. Like, I, I cannot have the airbrush always ready to go on my desk because I don't have the space for it. So I would have to assemble it every time, which is super annoying. That's why I don't use it. If I if I did have space for it, I would use it a lot often, a lot more often. I actually am really interested in the new Reaper airbrush. Uh, I'm super curious about it. I love the fact that they made it so that you can remove the needle without having to disassemble the whole thing. That stuff is so good. I would like to try it in case anybody wants to send me a free copy to for review purposes. <coughs> I, I'm <coughs> sorry. It was a it was a strong way of cupping. 
No, exactly, Prima. Yeah, and brushes aren't lazy tools. It depends how you use them like anything else. A brush can be a lazy tool. Think about it. Like, if you dry brush a model and just dry brush, wouldn't that be a way to paint lazily? But you're using a brush, yet you are being lazy by dry brushing everything, right? Every tool can be used at maximum value or a minimum value. It's not an airbrush thing. It's a, it's a painter thing. If you are lazy, you will find la ways to be lazy with any tool you are given. Luca throws his brushes when done, so not good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we... We are pretty good here. Let's do some skin tone. I'm gonna be wearing my my glasses. Lazy painting to have people get banged out of the t to have people get models banged out of the table. Lazy painting would be cool. There are many ways to be lazy in any painting. Okay, so let me let me get some uh, some colors out for our skin. Uh, yeah, these are all fine. These are all very very fine color. I would assume lazy painting that the fastest way to be lazy at painting would be to uh, prime the model, do a zenithal prime, so like black, black prime and then white on top, and then just washing the colors on top. And now about varnishes, any ray for the tabletop minis? means that will be touched a lot. Uh, when you're varnishing for tabletop, uh, the biggest suggestion I have gotten, which I've used every time I had to work on it, when you're varnishing for tabletop, it's a good idea to do a gloss varnish and then two matte varnishes on top. Because if you do just gl gloss, okay, so every varnish has a, a value of protection. Gloss varnish is the varnish that as a single layer protects the most. And then you have satin and then you have matte. Matte is barely any protection to a model. So what you want to do is use gloss because it has a lot of protection, but also looks awful because like it makes the model look incredibly wet, like you just chucked it in a, in a, in a bucket of water. So to avoid it looking so watery, you do two matte varnishes on top. So you tone down the glossiness, it becomes more of a satin, a dull satin kind, kind of effect, and it works perfectly. Isn't that what contrast paints are doing though? Zenithal plus gloss. Uh, contrast paints are their own kind of devil thing. Uh, you could use inks to almost the same result, I feel. I feel like you could use inks this, almost to the same result, if you wanted to. It, it depends how... I don't know. There are many ways to paint, and many of those ways are effective only when the painter has experience with them. In a sense that there are many ways to paint, and uh, there isn't a more effective one than another. It's just a matter of practice. Some people have more practice with one thing, so they will tell you that they have... Like, for example, I'm a wet blender, right? I, I don't really glaze much, I don't really do much of that. I know how to do it, but I if I can, every time I have an option, to do it, I will web blend. That doesn't mean that web blending is the best technique ever. It just means that I enjoy doing it more than anything else. Now, if you have a hard time finding a way to web blend easily, and you can't really manage to do it, then you should probably look into other things, right? Every painter has their own toolbox. The, um, the objective should probably be to have a bigger, the biggest possible toolbox you can, but that doesn't mean you will ever be a master at all techniques. No painter is. I have met and talked with some of the best painters in the world, and there's things they can't do. 
Some of them can't really do non-metallic well. Some of them uh, can't use an airbrush. Some of them uh, uh, can't wet blend. Like, it's not... You don't have to know everything as long as you try everything out to at least experience it. That's important, I think. It's the, it's the not being afraid of trying things out. You can then find out that you're not good at them, and that's it. That said, though, uh, you can always get good enough at something with enough practice. Those people aren't good with tools because they decide that uh, they don't need them. It's not like they can't get good with them, it's just that they don't, they don't care about it. Yeah, exactly, Lazy. Every, any mistake you do can be easily fixed. Because I'm trying to go for a, I don't know, like a, a Caucasian skin tone. So I'm, I'm mixing a bunch of colors together to get like that Caucasian skin tone. I will have to go back and reinforce the shadows on the face after I paint the skin tone because right now it's a bit complicated to preserve the shadows. But you can see that I am highlighting the nose, the mouth, the cheekbones, the fingers, of course. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I want this color to be like this, or if I want it to be slightly brighter, because right now it's a bit too, a bit too orange. I feel like this. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. So I'll be pushing the slides a bit. But like, I... I think like the model is starting to look pretty good. It's getting the... That comic booky look. All of the white areas that I haven't painted yet are kind of giving the model away a little bit. So once I do base coat those and I light those, I think we're going to be at a good stage. I can definitely get this guy done tonight. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't have the Hugo command, I don't think. More white, more white, more light. Always, always push the light as much as you can. If you want to, of course, but I tend to, to follow this suggestion a lot. Like I, I get as much light as I can possibly do. Okay, let me get some black again, paint more into the eyes, because one cool thing about this style is that, which is also saves you time a lot when painting this style, is that the eyes don't have to be painted. Uh, you just block them in with a black, and you're done, pretty much. Because that makes the, that makes the character look, uh, you know, broody and stuff, not having the eyes painted and instead having just a black, a black hole makes him look very scary and that, that works nicely for this style, so, you know, eyes are obnoxious to paint, regardless of your ability as a painter, they always are obnoxious, so it, it's a good thing that you can just avoid painting them. Okay. 
So we got that sorted out. I'm just going to be black line in the fingers again. And I don't know if you can notice this, but like making mistakes is part of my modus operandi. Like I already had a black line on these fingers and then when I painted the skin tone, I lost it, right? Now, some people could think that that was a mistake and, uh, you know, feel bad about themselves and think that they don't have enough precision and stuff like that. I, I honestly found a lot of success in just not caring about it. And just accepting the fact that I will make mistakes during the paint job. But what matters the most at the end is that it looks good. Regardless of how many mistakes there aren't. I'm also going to be glazing a bit of an orange since I have it on the palette. I'm going to be glazing it onto the... Uh, whatever this thing is. Because it was looking a bit too greyish. A bit too... Eh. So, some orange will do. Again, it's not really affecting the black because it's a glaze. But it's modifying the color. And that's why that's how I use glazes. Uh, you see me glaze to modify tones. Like when I feel like, oh man, I want this to be more green, more red, more something. I will glaze over it. But if I'm actually building up the colors, it will be what blending most of the time. Okay, so with the colors we have here, we can also do the bones, I think. Um, we can pretty much use the skin tone colors and just make them more desaturated. Boom. Just gonna block in the color. How do you make a glaze real quick? Like a wash? Um, not exactly, no. I'll show you. So... Also, I think that the blade should be a bone, by the way. Like, I did it in non-metallic the other time because people were asking me, but I honestly believe this would look way better if it was bone. So I'm just gonna go and do it in bone. Um, a glaze can be considered a wash, technically speaking, but it's not really a wash. So, like... Many people that teach how to do glazing will tell you that uh, in order to find out how a glaze looks like, like if you have a glaze on your palette, uh, would be to look for a skimmed milk consistency. Now, I don't know if you guys, where you're from, but where I am from, skimmed milk is not something we actually see every day, so I don't exactly know the consistency of it. I got to a point, like when I was starting learning, like I, I got to a point where I watched a video of a guy that was like, if you don't know how skin milk looks, just buy it. Put it on your palette and play around with it with a brush to feel the consistency. Which is all fine and all, but there are easier ways to understand that if you're doing a glaze correctly. And that way is to get the paint, slap it on, on a part of your palette, like I'm doing here, and then you get some water on the brush and then you add it to it. You added the water to it. Well done. Now you clean the brush on a paper towel, you tap it a few times. Get rid of the excess paint because you don't want it. You want as little paint as you want, as you can. And then you slide it on your thumbnail. Now, is the paint transparent? Can I still see my skin tone or is the paint overtaking my skin tone? It is transparent, but not enough. Because I can, it's, it's, it's covering. So, I get more water. I thin it more. I tap it on the paper towel, like I showed you a few seconds ago. And then I go... Can I see my skin tone now? Yes, I can. Right? The glaze is a bit too watery, maybe. Even too thin. Because I don't see much of the color. So I'm gonna add back some more color. And bam! Got a glaze. Right? And that's how you find out if you have a glaze or not. Just check on your thumb. By adding water to a paint. Until it looks, you know, like I showed you. And every paint can work the same way. Don't look for a consistency. Look for a finish. It's, I think it's wrong to look for a consistency because many different brands have many different feelings. Reaper, for example, is a very is a very uh, creamy paint. You can see that as I move it around on the palette, it has a bit of a creamy thing. So, like, you, would, you could argue that Reaper paints 
feel like glazers on the palette immediately after out of the pot, but that's not true because they do have coverage. So like this wouldn't be a glaze. The feeling could be the same of skimmed milk, but the paint definitely isn't a glaze. So you have to thin it more. So like, don't look for a finish, look for a result. And the result is the paint has to barely seen, be seeable on, uh, on your thumb as you paint it on top of it. It is primal indeed. Uh, is there a significant difference between a wash and a glaze other than the application? Uh, yes, many things. Uh, washes are paints that have been thinned quite a lot and they've also have been added different additives. So it's not just water. When you buy a wash, you're not buying acrylic paint with water added to it. You're buying uh, you get, you're buying paint that has been thinned with water like, and acrylic medium, of course, but also um, surface tension less and other things like stuff that improve that decreases the surface that increases the surf that decreases 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 surface tension, which means that a wash will flow into the recesses almost automatically. Will tend to follow gravity more. So as you place it, the wash will just kind of expand and go look for recesses to be in. A glaze doesn't, because a glaze is just a normal acrylic with water, so the glaze will stay where you place it. And also the application, as you said, is very different because a wash usually is used all over a thing, because exactly you are looking to shade the recesses, so you paint all over the thing, so the wash flows in the recesses, while a glaze is usually used in very, very small areas to just get that gradient or that 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 something happening you don't wash a whole model with a glaze although i do it uh, my way of painting uses a technique which is called wet on wet and it's a bit difficult to explain but it is once you know how to do it it is so invaluable and if you guys want to i can show you wet on wet if you'd liked and it's so invaluable as a technique. It is difficult to pull off, though. Hey, thank you, John. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. So we can start our paint along. I don't know if... Do you guys mind if I talk about the paint along uh, I want to do on, on my own thing, or... I don't want to... That's fine. That's not a problem. So we're going to be starting a, a paint along on my own Twitch stream. From November until uh, for the next five months at least every month i will be spending a day painting like i'm doing with you guys now doing a tutorial on how i'm painting techniques i'm using showing them uh, i made a list of paints and models i intend to be using from reaper on my discord i don't know if any of my mods want to drop in maybe a discord invite link but if you guys want to join the discord we have a paint along channel there that will tell you which models we're, i'm going to be painting and what colors i'm going to be using so in case you want to buy them and join us on my own Twitch channel, because I am a, a Twitch streamer as well, uh, we can paint together. It's something that I wanted to do for the longest time, and uh, we finally pulled the trigger on it, and I'm very, very happy to do so. So if you guys want to be part of it, we can do these, these little bonus streams where, uh, where I paint Reaper minis. We have, uh, yeah, we have five of them chosen. The community, my, my, my alpaca has chosen the minis. So blame them if you don't like them. I don't. I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Okay. So we got we got this fairly in the bag. Just need to highlight the bones. I am reinforcing the highlights on the cheekbones and the nose a little bit because I would like them to be like that. So same thing. We have our bone color, I'm just cutting white. Bam. And we have a, we have an ally. Hello, Scrying, how you doing? You fantastic person. You can see that it's a two color thing right like we have this dark uh, we have this dark brown ochre base coat i add a bit of white and bam i get an highlight 
again the 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 the, the key word for this comic book style is sim simple it needs to look simple it's a very high effective paint job because it is nice to look at like especially from afar it still has its impact like if you had a dnd team painted like this like they would look cool i think so it has a nice impact uh but you're not trying to spend your weeks on this paint job. you're trying to get it done quickly so you paint it with quick techniques I've used washes as glazes before, at least using the same painting method. You can do that. You can do that for sure. You can uh, you can glaze with many things. You can glaze with oil paints if you want. No, we went to stop can be hard. I will. Uh, I will tell you guys my personal way of uh, of figuring out when to stop based on what I'm painting. So let's say, am I painting a model for, uh, I don't know, a board game that I quickly have to get done for whatever reason and I just need the model to have color on it and be done? Well, then does the model look good from this distance, you know, from like a meter away? Does the, can I see the various detail in the model? Can I see the things in it? Then it's good enough. Now, am I painting a model for a board game that maybe has a few model counts in it? So it's going to be a bit of a closer kind of game. I can see the model from a bit of a close, like D&D, &D, for example. Well, then, does the model look good from this distance? If it does, then I'm good. Am I painting a model for a for a display commission or for something beautiful that I have to absolutely make look amazing, then does it look good from this distance? Am I painting a model from a comp for a competition where I want to win? Does it look good from this distance? That's the questions I ask myself. Like, uh, I can show you, I don't know, one of my models. Like, she is a competition piece, and she looks pretty good even from this distance, right? So I know that we got the competition quality out of the way. That doesn't mean that she doesn't look good from afar. Of course she does. Like, as I zoom out, she still looks pretty good. But that's obvious. Like, if you very zoomed in, pictures look good, then even far the picture will look nice. But, you know, that's, that's how I decide when to stop on a model. Alright. Speaking of, I have forgotten to base coat the bone on top of the thing. So I'm going to be doing that real quick. Thank you, Kuro. Sometimes I fail to notice mold lines until the very end of a paint job. And like here, I'm just, you know, I, I decided that I want these, uh, these uh, scythe to look completely like it's made of bone. So I'm just, you know, pushing the highlights in a very simple kind of way to get it to look a bit drier. As we established, we want a lot of contrast in the shadows for this style, which means the shadows are totally unblended, just blocked in, in black, and that's it. But when it comes to the highlights, we want to sort of gently blend them. So I'm going to be getting the shadows to be, you know, black and defined. And... Uh, And then rescue the allies and all that. Okay. 
like for example here I want to blend the two colors right I have these uh, I have these uh, base coat and these highlights and I want to blend them I just make a mix of the two as you can see here and uh, boom I place it in between them and I get a bit of a better blend it's not a full blend so if I want to blend more I will add more of the highlight and add it more and then if I want more of a blend I add a bit more highlight and I get like the final blend right just when you when you're looking to get two colors to blend together and get like a gradient just mix them together and block it in in most cases unless there is too much of a difference between them so like if you're trying to blend I don't know a yellow with a purple then maybe you will have a very hard time mixing them together to get the blend but if you're working with highlighting something so like gentle changes in brightness you can easily get that done with just mixing the two that's why mixing is important because uh even when, when you're using like a massive amount of paints in your painting, which again, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, you will find yourself to a point where you have to blend. And uh, having at least the base understanding of how mixing works uh, means that you can achieve it. And by mixing, the basic understanding is simply just adding the paints together. It's experience, Ercon. You you can get her too. Also, your blends don't look bad, dude. Like when you show me your paint jobs, they look nice. I like how you paint. You're being too harsh on yourself. I only show you one side of the mini. Well, that side looked good. I liked it. Eh. Again, the dark, the shadow, the black doesn't have to be blended for this style to look nice. I mean, if you want to blend it, you can. But that's just a lot more work. But for this specific style, all it matters is that you have a shadow and then you have a, a mid-tone, mid like this. In the meantime, I'm also gonna be working on quickly highlighting the bones here. There we go. That was an accident. What was an accident? Sorry. I think I might have accidentally uh, timed out uh, your girlfriend. <laughs> she deserves it. I was, try I was trying to give her link permissions, and <laughs> apparently the bot was misbehaving. Marika. We're sorry. Oh no, she's still there. Never mind. You you can link to Discord if you want now, Mike. I think. Let me let me see. It should work now. Okay. So, is there anything you guys would like me to see? What, what time is? It? Okay, yeah, we have we have one, one more hour. So, like, is there anything you guys would like me to see work uh, a bit more in depth? Maybe any detail that you don't like or you would like to see fleshed out a bit more. I can. I have to do the beard first off. So let me just do that while I wait for your reply. But I'm just gonna be getting a gray out and kind of alighting with that. Because e even though the beard is black, I want to give it that that uh, comic booky look. So. We can push the highlights a bit on it.
Next time I get to work with you guys, I was talking with it, uh, with Justin, about it with Justin earlier. I think I'm gonna be doing um, uh, a nice OSL model. I have, uh, I am terrible with names, so I never remember the name of things. But there's this character from Reaper uh, of a guy basically uh, squatting on top of a crumbled column, and he has like this flaming blade. And uh, yeah. I'm probably going to be doing some OSL, I'll show you guys some nice flames. No, the link has been censored, Mariga. Yeah. There we go. Well, no, I, 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 gave her, I gave her mod permissions. Nice, Mariga, you got you became mod here too. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, as an example of an OSL I've done. Something something I could easily replicate here for, for, uh, for Reaper. Yeah, like a nice warm orangey OSL happening. That guy, that model there of the dude uh, I was talking about looks beautiful, by the way. So it would be fun to paint. Yes! Ban everybody, Marika! No, I'm joking, of course, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Okay, we got our beard sorted out. Uh, the hourglass said... Uh, yeah, the hourglass idea is not... Too bad, although it doesn't really look like an hourglass because uh, it doesn't it doesn't have that the shape of an hourglass really. So I don't think it would work. In the meantime, I'm gonna be finishing up the chains here. Hello, Ray, how you doing? Fancy nice seeing you here too, man. How you doing? Good day. Okay. We can just do the, the little things on the chest. Yeah, let's go. Just quickly painting things up, like one, once you once you get the colors blocked in and the shadows blocked in, everything kind of tends to fall into place. So it doesn't take much work to get things sorted out after that. Just cleaning things up. We can maybe make the uh, the cape a little bit darker because it's a bit too vibrant right now, I think. Considering he's like a necromancer, I do like how the cape looks like, but I don't. I just don't feel like it fits the model. So I'm gonna be glazing a darker color on top of all of it to darken everything down. Again, as you can see, I'm using glazing as an overall thing. I don't blend with it, I just simply use it to modify things around. Doing great, nice. Glad you're doing great. Okay, while that dries we can just go back to our black and do our best in cleaning up the model around. So like any, any area we feel like it needs more of a stark shadow, more contrast, we can just achieve it by easily locking in our lines and since we don't have to blend any of this as long as we place it in a way that we like we're done enjoy your food lazy see you later man nice to meet you okay okay good stuff I 
can also maybe reinforce the the runes. So they don't look they don't look dark enough. Okay. Okay. Blocking in more shadows, getting it getting more definition out of this, trying to clean up the shadows. But again, I I don't look to blend the shadows, so I'm just trying to make them look like they are intentionally placed in such a way. And the best way to do so is to make sure that the shadow actually has like a form and it isn't, doesn't look brushed, but instead looks painted. Like painterly. It has like a nice look to it. It has to be nice to look at. Okay, we can do the base. Um, the base, I'm just gonna paint black the sides of. Like so. But yeah, my quest for a good brush continues, man. When are you guys making one? I mean, Reaper, when are you guys making a series of beautiful brushes? Have you ever thought about it? I I don't know. I'm sure Ed and Dave at some point had considered it. To be completely honest, there's no way they haven't at some point. But whether or not we'll see one, I mean, we did get an airbrush, so that's a good step. That is a great thing, yeah. So, um, speaking of which, do you you have one, right? What? One of the Reaper airbrushes? No, I have not. Oh, you but you use an airbrush, right? Uh, yeah, when I can, yes. All the airbrush I have are kind of dead that they broke down or stuff, but uh, yes, I would like to use the airbrush more in my painting when possible. I was talking about it earlier when you were having lunch that um, the Reaper airbrush is so cool because you can just remove the needle without having to disassemble it, so it's so much easier to work with it. Yeah, everyone I've talked to about it, they really enjoy it, so it's, I, I think that, uh, you know, if you hadn't tried it, then maybe we can uh, send you a demo model and you can give it a shot. I would love to, yes. I would love to. I can do like a, I don't know, like a couple of days of painting on my stream as a way to repay you for it, like and do like testing with it, trying things out, learning things. That would be cool. Because I do yeah. need to get good with it. Yeah, and I I would love to see it. I I can imagine that other people would like to see it on on the stream too. I mean, it's a good place for you to do it. So, and to answer John's question, yeah, I think we can send Luca one. Pretty sure we could we could make that work. John that would be I amazing. Can pull most uh, most strings that we need to for stuff like this. So. That would be absolutely fantastic. I would love to use it. Yeah, I can I can. I mean, if you guys want to see an Italian just make gestures because I can't swear, because I, I can't swear here, so I can only do like BBD gestures and like look angry. I would love to use the airbrush. <laughs> I said my own stream exactly because I knew that I was gonna get mad at airbrushing. Not because of the airbrush, but because of my abilities with it aren't on par with my brush skills. So maybe maybe I should practice with it a bit more before I, I show you guys how I use it, but yes. I can I can do that. I would absolutely love to get the airbrush. Like I haven't seen people use it yet. Like what did the uh, what have you is anybody that, that's good with the Arbush have done anything with it? With the new Vex, I mean? Any paint job um, that... I, I completed paint jobs. I think there's some out there. So are you familiar with Aaron Lovejoy? Yeah. He, he's, yeah, He so he he did something for us during Reapercon where he actually okay. showed the whole thing. Um, it's on our YouTube channel, actually. And I think probably still on our Twitch VODs. But uh, he did some stuff. Pro uh, Michael Proctor did an entire episode on it. Um, okay. I, I don't know if I have seen, on stream at least, a, a complete beginning to end. Okay. I mean, Aaron might have something like that, but I don't know if it's uh, accessible, like, 
publicly because I think he has a Patreon. So I got it. I got it. I got it. The way I would use the airbrush is a way where um. So there are many. For those of you who don't know, uh, there are many ways of painting minis. Of course, like many styles, many painters have their own thing going on, and they all do it the the certain way. There is a particular style which I am absolutely in love with, and I want to learn how to paint that way. And I've always wanted to. And it's the Spanish style. Like people like Mark Masculin, people like Sergio Calvo, those kind of guys. And they all use the airbrush. They all do for a very specific thing, which is uh, painting shadows and then blending. They don't use the airbrush. They do, they, sorry, they don't use the brush for shading or they don't use the brush for blending. They will be sketching very heavily with the brush and then get the blend with the airbrush. And that's something that I absolutely have to learn because I do this for a living, the whole painting thing. So the faster I can get, the better. So it's definitely something I have to practice on. And yes, I do have an airbrush, but it's a terrible airbrush for a known reason, honestly, because it should be good, but it isn't. So I would absolutely love to use yours. Try things out. Yeah, Aaron is a great painter. He does some pretty, uh, pretty insane stuff with an airbrush. He does. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you're good with the airbrush, it's like it's magic. The same as a brush to an extent. Like uh, when it's beautiful to watch people work with tools they are good with. You know what I mean? Like it always looks like it's magic when they do things. Okay, just blocking in this shadow as a, as I was doing earlier, just reinforcing this black in in the shade. But I think we are at a pretty good stage here, like, we're, we're done with this guy almost. I did make the base kind of a green tone, like a green-grey tone to to kind of get back with the cloak. Otherwise the cloak would feel a bit out of place, so I think having more of that green somewhere else would have was good, so we did. I did do that. Italian Stalin? No. <laughs> no, Stalin. Stalin. No, it's just a normal black bar. Uh, the, the Vanta Black or whatever, like, they are difficult to make work on a model. I hope the idea I have for the paint job I'm doing with it works out. I, I'll find out tomorrow. I'm actually very curious. Okay, I think we are, yeah, we are at a pretty good state. I'm just gonna check how the model looks like from uh, underneath my desk. That's something I do all the time. Like, uh, the lights I have on my desk make the model bright for you to see, but for me, the painter, they make it a little too bright. So I tend to uh, always check underneath my desk, away from the lights, to see if what I painted uh, looks good or not. And I think it does, like, for the purpose of this paint job, I think it does look good. You can paint a stealth mini with that, yeah. Okay, like a well, if you're like a model with, uh, you know, like a, the, the movie Sparta, like the well, that could work. Getting the shadows blocked in, again, making sure that they aren't blended. I want the shadows to not be blended. I need that, that weird comic booky effect. Of course, black lining is very important when doing this style. Uh, black lining is when you place a black line of paint between details to, to define them. It is very important to use it when you're doing this because it pushes the effect a lot more.
for doing windows and the base coat for smoke ghost mode. I have I am working on a paint job for my Patreon that uh, that's gonna be using it. Hopefully, it looks good. I think we're good here with this bad boy, which is a bit of an issue because I don't, I don't know what to paint next. <laughs> I have the I have the fryer guy I think somewhere around here. We can we can quickly speed paint the fryer dude, and then next time we see each other, I can get to work on some serious painting. Because uh, again, this style here is a very simple tabletopy thing. It's not exactly how I normally paint or the quality I usually produce. Uh, I usually, again, as I showed earlier, I usually paint something like more to this stuff. So it would be nice to show you this kind of painting. But I did want to finish this uh, this comic book thing. Let me find the monk though, because I I know he's here. I absolutely know he's here because I saw him like uh, two days ago on my desk, and I haven't. My desk is a mess. Like it is a super mess. You have guys have an idea. Let me find him. There he is, I found him. So, oh, there you go. He's here. So, like, we can we can get this guy off of it. And get this guy on it. It's near the shoulder pads, yeah. Reaper has a couple of busts, yeah. Okay, well. Just quick switch of a model. This one I can work a bit more, uh, a bit more thoroughly on it. So yeah, let's just keep working. I'm gonna be trying to get a brown out and uh, work from there. Yeah, mahogany brown sounds seems like a good color. I wanna do, I wanna do the leathers and uh, the things on them. And then we can do the keg. We can quickly finish two paint jobs tonight, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. And next time we see each other, I can start working on some. Uh, no, bibbidi babbidi things. I found the shoulder pads, Moneta, you know? I did actually find them. So now I have like two sets of them, for no reason. Yeah, I will fix the belly, no problem. Okay, so let's, let's just get the mahogany out. Boom. Nice color, I like this one. Very nice color. Works well for leather. Paper minis are fun to paint, dude. I, I like them. They are detailed enough to be good quality, but they never really feel overwhelming. It's very easy to to find miniatures that are super overwhelming in the details. Like these ones are easy to to work around. It's fun, it's really relaxing. I enjoy this. Very therapeutic. Yeah, it's really good, Mariga. Mahogany. Damn it. When you when you when this happens and you're base coating something and the paint. And the paint ends up on a detail you don't wanna. Clean the brush and get it wet. And then just move it around like this. If the paint is still wet, it will come off. And uh, you won't have to fix the area by painting over it. You can just get rid of the of the mistake before it, it takes a hold. Like I just did. It's 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 very very important, I think, in order to enjoy this hobby, 
it's very important to understand that it's it's a lot better to learn how to fix mistakes than learn how to not make them. Because it's impossible not to make a mistake, and forcing yourself to be perfect at all times will make painting difficult for you. Like, learning all these small tricks to get rid of a mistake when you make it will make you so much more carefree and have a much better time painting than it would be just always trying to be perfect and neat at everything you do, because it's impossible. Especially if you if you really paint for a hobby, like a couple of hours every day, or more than that, like eventually your attention span will kind of fall off, so. Okay. <laughs> I scream for an hour and then everything. Yeah, may maybe don't. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't scream. Try to... Try to do what I showed you. Uh, it's gonna work out, I promise. I'm gonna be making a bit of a brighter color, adding some white and yellow to just get that that light in there. And bam. We can get our highlight for the leather. Hey, no problem, 20. But yeah, I remember when we... I started this guy, like, many more... I don't, when was my stream with you guys? Not the Reapercon, the other one. Like, it was four or five, maybe six months ago. It was a long time, yeah. It was It was definitely months. Yeah, we, we can finally get him done tonight. Poor Friar, man. I ignored him so long. No longer, though. I've been painting individual bricks on a wall of a mini building for the last hour. That is incredible commitment to the cause, man. You happy with how it looks, though? Because that's what matters. Oh yeah, I think it's fantastic. No, I'm sorry. I mean the, <laughs> I mean the person that spent an hour painting bricks, because. That's like a soul shattering kind of endeavor, but Oh, I thought you were saying you you did the bricks. Ah, no, no, I, I didn't. I didn't see that. Oh, okay, I understand now. But I was I was about to say, look, I couldn't imagine you painting bricks for an hour. No, man, that there's no way I'm doing that. That takes dedication. I agree. Yeah, I. That's the fun thing. I don't really have that dedication in me. Like uh. I joke a lot about it in my stream. Because, like, I'm Italian, so we are, we are famous for always being at the beach and and enjoying the good sun and having a laugh and dancing, and we don't really like working much. As a, it's a, of course, it's a stereotype, but you know, since I'm Italian, I can I can play around with it. So, like, stuff that takes all of this time to get done, it, it tends to get difficult for me to execute. There are many ways to do things. <laughs> Mostly yes, I tried to dry brush but it was taking way too long and not coming through with, it, with enough detail. Can I give you a suggestion, Max? Or, I mean, if you're, if you're happy with the way you're going, uh, but I, c I can give you a bit of suggestion next time you have to paint a brick wall, maybe. I ordered the alpacas and we have pineapple for your pizza. I don't want any of that. Thank you very much. Hello, Arx, how you doing? So, Next time you have to paint something obnoxious like a brick wall that has details, but it's just big and annoying, rather than painting it by hand, uh, try priming it or painting it very quickly in a kind of a bright gray color. But let me let me try to use my hand as a way to show you. So I can I can base coat the the you can base coat the you can base coat the the wall in a bit of a bright gray, like so. Like, you have this bright grey, right? Imagine that my palm that I'm painting is the entirety of the brick wall. And then when the grey dries, you can go back to it with any colour you want and kind of glaze it over, wash it, so to speak. And since the wall is grey, the colour will stick to it very nicely. So you can get a lot of different colours happening at the same time, but you don't actually have to paint them. You can just simply 
wash the model with a million different colors and the gray there will give you enough of a color brightness to for them to stick they will blend nicely and you will get also the finishing and then you can dry brush on top to just get the edges highlighted it, it's it's generally i don't know like a I have, I've heard that stereotype for Italians too. But I think every human on the planet is like that, to be honest. Like, Okay, so we're just getting our lights sorted out. Adding, adding them. I will paint... Uh I am painting it in an ivorish color. It's an ugly brick color common around Texas. Do you have an airbrush? Hello, Rumble. Good evening. What are you doing? Nope. Okay. Hello, Bank. How you doing, man? Good day. Keep hoping to win. Wait, you're doing a giveaway for an airbrush? Wow. That's cool. Okay. So I'm pushing the lights quite a lot way more than uh, I want but I'm doing it to make it faster for myself because I can then glaze over to get the right color so for now it's all about just getting value and brightness on uh, on these volumes and then I can make them look right color wise <laughs> no I didn't I'm sorry I had to poke the pizza bell, but seriously, how was the stream been going? It's going well, it's going well. We we finished up this guy. I started this dude back during Reapercon. I wanted to show people like a, a quick comic booky style paint job thingy. And I'm, I got done with him. So since we have time left, we have another half hour, I can spend it painting uh, this friar guy. And then next time we meet up, I'm gonna actually show the proper my, my, the proper meters then way of painting and uh, do some serious painting like I'm gonna I have a bunch of models from Reaper I'm gonna pick one of them and just you know one that I feel like could be cool I have um, I have the anti-paladin model which is also really cool actually I don't know would you guys okay for, for next time tell me guys please those of you watching please because uh, I'm working for you in here so like you tell me what you want to see would you like to see OSL or would you like to see non-metallic metal done? <laughs> Thank you, Bank. Okay, Scrying. I'll see you later, dude. Have a good one. OSL for sure. OSL, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Then I'll look into my my list of models that I have and find one that can uh, work nicely with it. Blocking. I'm currently glazing the color on top so I can get that nice, nice, nice look. Because of course my highlights right now are a bit too white, right? I don't want them to be this white. So if I glaze over them, uh, the bright color I have will still look bright, but more. There's a weird sound outside, sorry. But more brown. Okay. So looks like OSL is the winner. 
That's good. I can do no metallic in the future as well. It doesn't. It's not a big deal. I can do both. Just gonna quickly fix our uh, belly here. Because for some reason there is like a stain of some color on it, so I'm just gonna quickly fix it. OSL on non-metallic. Aha. Uh -huh. Got that sorted out. Uh, I could probably use this uh, light color to push the lights also a bit more on the on the legs. Yeah, I like it more. Two birds in one stone. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like uh, adding too many eggs to the basket can make the basket very difficult to understand. In a sense that... Uh, I don't know, it's, it can be tough to show OSL and Metallic at the same time. I mean, I have done it in the past, but... For example, this guy... This guy has... OSL and non metallic at the same time. Not that easy to display and show. Hello, experimenter. How you doing? I'd really like to have a class on how to paint glass. My only thought is a blue that fades to white into white spots. That that wouldn't be wrong. Uh, there are many ways to paint hourglasses. Really, depends on what kind of glass you think is. Okay, I'm, I'm using an even brighter color here on the leathers. Again, it's not meant to be the final color. I know I'm gonna glaze over it, so I'm using a bit of a a bit of a uh, whitish color because I need the value from the color more than the color itself. So it's a bit of a white color thing. I don't really care what color it is. I just need it bright, so that when I glaze over it, it gives me that that nice leathery look and I'm of course painting with uh, a bit of a random brush stroke I'm not painting a proper la layer of paint but I'm instead just kind of stippling the paint around creating lines noise in it to texture it and make it look like the leather has been used a lot and it's kind of warm worn sorry same goes on the edges Uh, the mini with the hourglass, yes, this guy. I can zoom in quick. I have to go find um, um, a tissue because I need to sneeze and I don't want to kill half of the world because, you know, my nose is a dangerous weapon. So just give me a second so I can go get a paper, uh, um, a, a tissue. Sorry, I'll be back in a moment.
I also grabbed a drink while I was away. Sorry. There is a poll on top of the chat. Nice. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Man, poll powers indeed. You need a nose emote? Um, I do actually have it. Here you go. We have it. <laughs> My nose is so big, it has its own stream, dude. Okay, so now we can go back to our original base code and glaze over all of this to get myself uh, a leathery color. But since I've used kind of a white color, uh, it's gonna look brighter and nice. Like this. There we go. See very easily. Very, very simply, very, very easily. Getting some light in there. Which is a good plan, you know, when uh, when you are in doubt. This is kind of a tabletop-y, simple, quick way for me to get highlights on a model. I, I usually don't do this when I'm painting uh, normally because it you relinquish a bit of the control of the paint job so I don't I tend not to like it too much but when you're having issues and you you don't just, you just want to get some quick blending without too much effort you can do this just push the allies using whites and grays and then glaze over the color doing so you will get a brighter version of the color directly on the model without having to mix it or doing anything and doing that will get you a bit of a nice look. Okay, so that's done. Uh, let's work on the on the wood, I guess. I like this model, it's cute. 
The skin tone needs a bit of fixing. Uh, the model itself, the scout, is really cool. Well, I like Mo. We can use the same color also for the uh, barrel on his back. And maybe add a bit of mahogany to it, just make it just slightly more browner. Yeah, like this. That's a uh, metal, I think. Yeah, it is. Ah, uh, no, it's a leather. It's a, it's a shrap. Ah, damn it. I forgot to paint this shrap. No. Okay, well, I can quickly paint it later. I should zoom out a bit, okay? Cool. Okay, more allies, of course, as always. Um... Yeah, more highlights. Again, wood has a grainy texture to it, so I can just uh, quickly paint some lines in there. They have been already sculpted by the by the people of Reaper, so that makes it a lot easier. You could also just, you know, paint them in a bit of a bright yellowish color and then wash them in brown. That can get you a nice wood effect too. It's nice when sculptors actually sculpt the wood. Too many times you don't see it in a model and it's sort of annoying. Because you have to freehand everything, right? But this guy, this guy was done well. He does have a texture on him, so that's the thing. Is these small details is really make a difference, like... Let me tell you, like, they really make a difference in quality. Like, these very small things, like the wood grain texture. Stuff like this in a sculpt really decide if it's... If the sculpt will be fun to paint or not. Okay, now that I'm here and the glaze I, I have done on the leather has dried, I can see that I need a bit more of it to, to get that nice look, because it's still looking a bit too grey, so we can, uh, we can reinforce the glaze we've done a few minutes ago. One more time. With this orange colour. At the same time, we can paint the leather straw. Okay. No, it's actually fine. Happy little accidents, like Bob would say. I ended up getting some of these uh, mohogany on the leather. That I had already painted, but I'm kind of okay with that. It's gonna blend with the glaze I did earlier and get more of a you know gradient. No, it's not rained. Shut up. It's fine. Uh, okay, so let's keep pushing. Oh, 
I find it so funny. Bob Ross was a great man. He did a lot for uh, for uh, hobby artists more than anybody else, I think. Gave people courage to try things out. He's he's a very inspirational kind of person to me and the work I do because he had this ability to really make you want to try canvas painting. Like I, I remember watching his videos when I was like 15 or something. And like he really want, made me want to just try canvas painting. And I never did. One day I will, man. One day I'm just gonna buy a canvas and just try to follow one of his tutorials, dude. I have a bunch of oil paints, so I could I could try. It's not like I missed I don't have any paints. Okay. Okay. VHS? No, on YouTube. I don't know if they've been removed after Twitch bought off the... the rights to them, but they, they used to be on YouTube. Just getting more progress, man. This model, I will, <laughs> I will eventually get this model done. I don't think I can get it done today. Not to a level I'm happy with, because uh, there's a lot to clean up on him, especially the skin tone and the cloth and everything. But, you know, we, we have done uh, one model and a half tonight. It was 15 years ago. Who watched YouTube in 20 in 2004? I did, dude. I was watching when I was a kid. I would watch C Nunners and uh, Mr. Sark. I still do, actually. <laughs> After all these years, I still watch them. I I love Mr. Sark, dude. But yeah, I used to watch YouTube a lot. I don't nearly as much anymore because I have been. Uh, Busy with my own work, but yeah, when I was a kid, I watched YouTube all the time. I used to be so jealous of those people. You know, I was like, man, you lucky people getting to, to make a living off of playing video games with your friends. How lucky are you? And then almost randomly, I sort of finished, kind of ended up in the same kind of world because I, I do have to have fun and, and chat with people and make friends and paint puppets for a living, so... I guess overall things sorted themselves out. I'm glad they did, really. This is a brief non-metallic thing I'm doing. By the way, on the... on this... on this weapon, I'm quickly making it look metallic. A couple of brush strokes and it's done. As you can see. One of the best things about non-metallic is that once you know the rules of it and you have gained enough experience to, to know what you have to look for, like, you can make a non-metallic object really, really quickly. Which is very fun. It's like a... It's like a magic trick. Like, I was talking to Justin earlier about it and, like, it, it really is like a magic trick. Like, it looks grey and then it looks metallic. I watch YouTube all the time, been watching since 2009, I don't watch TV, I watch YouTube all day, every day, never ending content. I'm always looking for channels to watch, but I don't, I don't have much luck with that. Like, for example, I am a, I am a massive history buff, I love history, I just, just love it, 
But I also love history when it's taken a bit more on a, in a narrative kind of way. Like, like, I don't like dates, I don't like names, I like the narrative aspect of history. Like, it's a fairy tale, right? And so far, the only channel I was able to find that had that kind of content was Oversimplified. It's called Oversimplified, which is a great channel. If you don't know him, go check him out because they're great content. But I haven't. They have, they have done many videos, so. I don't know. Kind of feels bad. Kinda, it's kind of weird because like I am a massive history buff and it's it's kind of interesting to know that I'm living, we're all living, in a time where history is being made right now. Like there will definitely be a chapter about 2020 in the history books of the future. Well, that's going to be cool. No. We were here. Sometimes I wonder if people that have done or have been part of history really know they have been. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I think it's difficult for people to figure out that they are in the middle of a historical event. I found a channel where a Japanese guy just goes around petting stray cats. It's fantastic. It is. MTV was better. I don't know what kind of MTV you had, but the one we had here was trash. Like, oh my god, I hated MTV. Every kid was watching MTV at the time. I really, really disliked it. Me personally, okay? Like, uh, this, this, this disliking I have, it's me and mine and personal. Vincenzo Celeste. It has nothing to do with Reaper. <laughs> but I didn't like MTV very much. History has always been made, if not immediately, just molding in coming years. Yeah. Yeah, at the very beginning of the 90s, yeah, it was alright. I liked it. They had some really cool animes. Like, MTV, for all its faults, it was one of the few channels that really made anime what it is today. Because at the time, you couldn't really find animes very easily. MTV was the only channel that had them. So that was cute. They had Brahma Half. I think they also had Evangelion as well. Like they had a bunch. At least in Italy. I don't know how it was in the in in other countries, but in Italy, MTV was the the spearhead of for the anime community. So that was good. But besides that, not much else to say about it. Viva! Oh, I remember watching Viva when I was a kid. Because uh, we had like satellite TV and uh, we would pick up Viva and I remember watching Viva even though I didn't understand the word. I just enjoyed watching German music, I guess. I think I still have the... We still have somewhere the VHS that I recorded when I was like eight. Hello, Mata. Uh, when I was like eight, I did record a video from Viva. Um, it was um, it was Prayer, the song Prayer from Disturbed. I really liked that song when I was eight. I still do, actually. So I remember that I would sit there watching Viva, waiting for them to replay the song so I could record it. And, I, and one day I finally managed to. And I still have the VHS, I think. With the... The music video of Prayer from Disturbed. You know what's funny is the uh, first time I ever heard that song was mm -hmm. I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Uh, and it was because uh, I don't know what year it came out, but I was a freshman in high school and I saw it on the. You may remember this, but the the Yahoo. Remember how Yahoo used to do the top 100 music videos? Yeah. Yeah. The first time I ever saw it was on there. So my buddy and I would uh, listen to it on repeat through that video. Uh, while playing Diablo 2 online. Oh, wow, that's amazing. It's crazy how you tie memories to individual songs, even. Yeah, yeah. Wait, how old are you? You are in... You are a freshman? How old are you? I am 30. 30? Just straight up 30? 
Yeah. Straight up 30. Uh, that's what I'm saying is I don't know how. Because I was eight I when the, when that song came out. Like, how could you have been freshman here? You know what I mean? That's incredible. Let me see. Let me see what year it came out. Like I remember, I clearly remember being below the age of ten. I am almost hundred percent sure. So if you are in freshman, how is that even possible? Freshman is fourteen, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was for uh, maybe. It says know. prayer. Prayer came out by Disturbed. Yes. Yeah, they came out in two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. So, how old were we? I'm from 91, 2002, I was nine, I was 11, I was 11, damn it, I was wrong, okay. Okay. And I was 14, so it had already been out for a couple of years, because my first year of high school was 2004, so it wasn't even new when I heard it the first time. But it's amazing, I love that song, dude. I, I, yeah, we listened to it on repeat. It's it was fantastic. That and uh, Panic at the Discos. I write sins, not tragedies. Oh yeah, that was another one. Have came you? Out, I think the same year. Have you ever played Burnout Paradise? I've not. Man, you you missed out because like I like my whole teenage years is Burnout Paradise because that game was a car game where you were crashing around and going at high speed. But what really made those games good was the the soundtrack you had like avenged sevenfold panic at the days you had like so many different genres mixed in and in it it was so good i actually discovered avenged sevenfold from burnout paradise and i'm so happy i did i love that band oh i'll have to check that out yeah they make uh they make some weird power metal music but i kind of like it Prayer is so good. Okay, we're just gonna push the, the outlets a bit more. It is midnight though, which means our two hours have come to pass. I believe. Ah, yeah, it's it's 5 p.m. here for us, but yeah, I can imagine it's getting kind of late for you. Yes. I, I, really, I just don't want to go over somebody else's lot. Shouldn't somebody else be live now? Am I? No? No, actually on Wednesdays you wrap it up. You're the last thing we have on Wednesdays now. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You're the finale. <laughs> finale. I guess we're gonna wrap this guy up uh, another time. Because I, I have so much work to do on him still. Like, I, I'm not happy with how he looks right now. I mean, it's not bad, but... You know, I want to do a bit more on him. It's it's a cute it's little. Really nice blue. It really is. Yeah, the blue is alright. I like it. It's it's a skin tone that needs so much more work. Cause like, um, colored skin tones are tough to pull off nicely. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot easier to paint a white person than a black one. Cause uh, making all of these uh, all of these browns and ochres and blacks and and stuff match together nicely, it's so hard. But like. Personally, like as an artist, I don't want to get into any topic, but like as an artist, uh, dark skin tones are beautiful to look at. Beautiful. They have like so many colors in them. Like if you if you go look, if you really want to do a good job on on a on a black skin tone, like on a bust, for example, or something like that, like you have to use purples in it, which is so weird. Like if you go and look at the skin tone of a black person and look in the shadows, you will find purples in it. They have so many colors in the skin, they're beautiful. So I, I, I want to try to do a good work on this one, but uh, as I, if I push the light too much, it doesn't look black anymore and kind of looks sick. If I don't push them enough, it doesn't look bright enough, so... It's a back and forth kind of deal, and... Uh, I would like to take a bit more time on it. Thank you, Twenty. Take care, dude, have a fantastic day. Hello, Gimli. <laughs> You missed, you never had Disturbed Farla? That's incredible. Hello, Andrew. So I guess that is it for today. I have been yeah. live, yeah, I've been live for two hours more. Like two hours and 20 it's minutes. A, it's been a great stream. I, uh, I enjoyed it. I wish I felt better in order to kind of, you know, talk nah, to it's you in the stream, but uh, it's it was a fantastic stream nonetheless. You definitely, I definitely agree. You can carry the stream without 
any issues. So. Uh, it's going to be a bit funner, I think, next week when I get to work on, uh, you know, my specific way of painting rather than showing things around. I can actually just sit here and paint as if it was a commission. And also, hopefully, the time will be a bit better for people to sit here and paint puppets and watch somebody paint puppets because uh, uh, this week isn't exactly the best week to do anything. <laughs> like, hopefully. Yeah, next week is going to be fun. I'm sure it will be. There Absolutely. isn't an uptime command, Monet. So, yeah, boys. I, I wish you all a fantastic evening. Have a... Have a good one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care of yourselves. Be safe, okay? See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you guys very much. Bye.